Okay, good morning. Uh, we are looking at chapter uh, 3-2 and unit 10. This is going to be about energy flow in an ecosystem. Uh, first thing I'd like to start you off with, with is a graphic here. This morning there is uh, at the bottom here, and notice that the, it's the base of the pyramid. This provides all the energy um, for the organisms above, and these and it gives all the energy, so we give them the name, the producers. Um, autotrophic organisms on our planet tend to be the producers, and they convert sunlight into energy that herbivores, or these rats, can use to eat. Um, then those uh, rats will get eaten by um, things like snakes, and they'll pass their energy on to the snakes, and eventually that snake could be eaten by um, an eagle. And what we're looking at here are different trophic levels. At each trophic level, we pass on only about, um, hopefully, 10% of our energy. And most of that energy gets lost as heat as we transfer. So what is energy flow? Energy flow in an ecosystem uh, is obtained in a producer and from photons of sunlight that come from our sun. And that is the main source of energy for every organism on this earth. Um, what happens is they capture in that, and if you remember back to unit four, that process of photosynthesis, these producers or autotrophic organisms will capture a photon um, of light and that photon will eventually be converted into, um, once it makes ATP or is converted into ATP energy, that ATP will be sent in to make C6H12O6 or simple sugars. And once those simple sugars are made, we get basically what you know as, and this is the world's worst plant, just so you know, um, we get a whole bunch of plants and then organisms start eating those plants. Um, so, some plants, um, excuse me, most plants are producers or autotrophic organisms for us and will be at the bottom of our pyramid. Um, some green algae will also be there, some bacteria. Um, photoplankton might be in this realm of things. And photosynthesis, and there are two types of way we get energy um, from our producers. There's photosynthetic organisms and there are chemosynthetic organisms which convert things like methane and other uh, sulfur dioxide into um, energy that they can use um, via, via chem chemosynthesis for um, energy. So what are the consumers? The consumers are heterotrophic organisms. Please know that heterotrophic organisms, these guys must go out and ingest something. So most of these organisms have some kind of mouth or teeth or something like that. So I'm just going to put heterotrophic here and I want you to realize that these creatures have to eat something. So whether it's a plant or whether it's a chicken McNugget, which is what I got here, um, they have to consume something for energy. So they rely on other organisms for energy um, in their food. Uh, the first type is a herbivore and a herbivore will eat only plants, so examples are pretty simple, uh, cow and a rabbit. Uh, carnivores will eat herbivores and they'll also eat other carnivores. Um, these could also be scavengers too. Um, they will only eat other animals, so they are heterotrophic and they have to eat other animals to survive. Uh, omnivores are, are kind of the laid back group, they will eat most anything. Um, humans are omnivores, meaning they'll eat both plants and other animals. Um, for their food. The next one is a detrick boar and what they do is they will start on the dead remains of organisms, um, things like earthworms, dung beetles, they go and start breaking down, they start the decomposition process. They basically eat what's called detris or material that's just died and they will begin breaking that down and then they're close related friends, the decomposers will come in and finish them off. So all of these consumers will eventually be added to a chart to make um, feeding relationships and also that energy pyramid. So uh, pretty simple. Food chain, probably should have seen this before. Uh, these are a series of steps in which an organism's transfer energy. So again, um, if we were to look at this, we would know that <clears throat> the acorn 
is a producer and these guys up above here are consumers and in this case this will be a level one this will be a level two consumer and this one would be um, a level three consumer in this case so what's happening is 100 percent of all the energy is started at the acorn and as we pass along we get 10 percent to the squirrel we get one percent of the original 100 percent to the fox and then we get point zero or point one percent to the coyote so what happens is we are passing on a percentage of the energy but most of the energy in this case is lost as heat energy so not very efficient and these are each one of these levels here is a trophic level in the food chain food web explains this a lot better because squirrels and foxes and coyotes don't always eat in this order so it links all organisms together in food chain and shows all the possible relationships of consumers and their feeding relationships so again uh, this word interconnected means basically that spider web effect of the coyote can eat the squirrel coyote can eat the fox the fox can eat the squirrel the fox can eat the coyote so it just shows all the possible relationships instead of this linear fashion so again, here's a food web. Notice that each level here has all of these possible feeding relationships with these arrows. Um, then we're labeled down here. We got our producers, which are the types of weed and the marsh grasses. Uh, we have our decomposers here. This is that word detris or dead things that are um, dying. So you'll have detrivores in there trying to break them down. Um, then we have our herbivores which will always be near the producers, uh, then our first level carnivores, and then our top level carnivores. So it just depends on what things are eating here. So again, 100% of the energy, 10% of the energy, 1%, uh, and then 0.1%. So this explains it a little bit better. Again, at the bottom are our producers. We have 10% of that energy pass on. Then it, as we move up to each trophic level or step up in the pyramid, we only pass on 10%. Again, 90% of this is lost as heat. So if we want to look at this as a unit of grams, if you take 5,000 grams of corn and feed it to um, chickens, you're going to expect about 500 grams of chicken to be produced. And then if you take that 500 grams of chicken to pass it on to um, a human or that human consumes that here at level two, they would expect to have 50 grams of human tissue produced. So again, producers, herbivores, level one consumer, level two consumer, level three consumer. So to finish this up, uh, trophic level are those steps in an ecosystem. Uh, so again, each step that you see in an ecosystem, so if we build a little pyramid here, at the bottom are our producers and each step above is called a trophic level. So this would be one, two, three, four trophic levels. 100% of the energy here, and then we only pass on 10% all the way up to the top. So producers again are at the bottom. Uh, anything that will produce energy, uh, usually via photosynthesis. Uh, level one consumers, that first tier right above uh, the producers. The level two consumers would eat or consume heterotrophically remember they have to eat something they would consume the level one consumers and this can go on for more than just three levels but typically we end at three uh, the level three consumers will eat the level two consumers for energy so again only about 10 percent of the energy available at one trophic level is passed on the next so again if you have 100 at the bottom you're only going to get 10 percent of that energy available 90 percent is lost as heat so again at the bottom here, we have all the energy made um, for our, our planet photosynthetically in autotrophic and producers, and only 10% of that energy gets passed on clear to the top. So again, we're not very efficient with our energy. 90% um, has lost as heat. So, and I think we better go over real quick the cycles of matter. Um, matter remembered is unlike energy because energy will not be able to be recycled 
and matter is passed on from one organism to another and remember that we are not any kind of higher deity we cannot create or destroy matter we can only change um, its state so what we end up doing is this cycling these matter through our ecosystems uh, what the water cycle naturally happens so your transpiration and all that stuff uh, carbon cycle and your nitrogen cycle uh, the carbon cycle deals with what happens with CO2 output and things like that from animals and how plants bring them in. Nitrogen cycle deals with basically the decomp and how nitrogen is recycled into soils and into the atmosphere. So these are limiting nutrients of an ecosystem and they can inhibit growth. So if we're missing one of these components, it will limit what can possibly grow in that ecosystem. Obviously, if we have not a lot of water and we're a rainforest we're going to have um, some problems with those biotic factors so a large input also be a runoff or fertilizer in oceans or anything can also change things and increase what's called an algae bloom so down in the snake river we see this quite often and it's about that time of year where there's a whole bunch of nutrients and sediments being deposited from um, upstream and very soon you'll see the river turn slightly green because of an algae bloom that will happen let me get through this real quick for you. Um, so again, just as review, this is um, the water cycle. Um, just as review, just so you know, evaporation uh, coming from oceans and lakes will evaporate or turn into a gas, water turns into a gas, and it will recondense in the atmosphere, forming clouds. Uh, transpiration comes directly from plants. Transpiration is the evaporation or the turning of water into vapor from plants. Uh, after it condenses, water will precipitate, we'll have our runoff, and then get some seepage, creating lakes. Our runoff will create lit lakes and lit rivers, and eventually that lake will create seepage and root uptake and will um, hopefully charge our aquifer. So that's the water cycle. The carbon dioxide cycle. Uh, photosynthesis, it's kind of neat to see some charts. Um, during the summertime in the northern hemisphere, you can see a dr uh, dramatic drop in the amount of CO2 level. When it's wintertime in the northern hemisphere, CO2 levels raise. It's because photosynthesis is, an, is occurring as much in um, the wintertime, obviously, because there's not as many plants. So know that uh, things that put CO2 in the air, um, we have all kinds of organisms breathing out CO2. We have natural things like volcanic activity. Um, we have some erosion that moves some CO2. Uh, respiration puts out a bunch of CO2. And then here's the bin, the biggest one. Uh, human activity has been putting a lot more CO2 in the air than the natural cycle could keep up with. Because again, it's the plants that are taking these and turning um, CO2 back into like oxygen and um, sugars, which are safer um, for the environment and for our um, greenhouse effect. The last one is the nitrogen cycle. As you can see here, we've got um, N2 in the atmosphere, we've got nitrogen in the atmosphere, and when you th see things like lightning storms and stuff, it fixes that nitrogen and allows it to fall. Um, it'll bond it with um, another or an oxygen and send it into or down on the ground. Um, what happens is also bacterias that are found in roots will also take um, nitrogen and fix it back in the ground to help um, fertilize this field naturally. So there are natural cycles. Um, here's that ammonia type thing happening. Um, so you get bacteria breaking things down, you get um, bacteria breaking down um, decomp of all kinds of creatures and waste and fecal matter. And what happens is we just keep recycling um, the nitrogen throughout the system and the more that there is a and the better that there is a cycle of this nitrogen go on the better an ecosystem will do in their nutrient value and the better the producers will do. So real quick um, after this pause it and see but you could check this as we go and I'll get all these here um, you can kind of pause it after each one and see where you're at um, and if you had to really think about any of these questions, you need to go back and review the podcast. Thanks a lot.